What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here and uh, welcome back to one of my videos. This is a recap of the live stream that we just did about two hours ago. Um, it happened on the 5th of May, South African time, 9 a.m., which is like GMT plus two. Anyways, it was a really cool stream. Um, I do think I messed up the video quality a bit, so I'm sorry about that. It will be better tomorrow, I swear. The scheduled stream for tomorrow is at 9 a.m. as well. Um, but yeah, let's just do a bit of a recap of what we did. So I'll show you the code now in a second what was happening. But uh, if I could just explain, we used MPX Create React App to build it like our tic-tac-toe app and we used the TypeScript template. Um, so like basically if I show you, it's it's like we used this and, and we even deployed our app to Firebase. But uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. So we did a bunch of stuff in our project. We cleaned up a lot of stuff. We implemented Prettier, which, which we've all done before. We, we set up our TS config. I mean, it was set up already, but we just added a field in it that allowed us to do absolute imports in our path. So you don't have to go like dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash components. You can just go like import this from components, which is really cool and helpful to keep your project clean. And our project will get quite complicated. So it would be good to be using that in the future. Anyway. Um, another thing we did is we installed styled components. Uh, we set up our Firebase project, so that's all good. And we even set up Firebase hosting. And then we moved our project to GitHub so that we can like, you know, keep it there and you guys can keep track of like, you know, what we're doing as well if you want to. So that's pretty much that. Um, the next thing that I want to do is actually just show you the code. So if we go look at um, what we did, was yeah the source files there but we we made some environment variables and i shouldn't be showing you this theoretically because that's uh, not very secure but i don't care if you hack this so it's totally fine this is one where i keep my private stuff but it's the same as the other one uh, the whole point is this one's not in source control and this one is so if i was doing like a production build and i didn't want to have like source control stuff i'd yeah my git ignore has that in source control so we did that um our package JSON, we uh, added, you know, Firebase and style components, uh, and then we moved everything to dev dependencies. We added a script for deploying. So if you run yarn deploy, it first runs the build and then it does the Firebase deploy, which is really cool. Um, that was quite nice to set up. We did run into quite a big roadblock with our environment variables not being sent through to Firebase, but uh, it turned out it was just a caching issue. Um, we also added prettier RC just so that um, we can make sure that all of these are like our code is consistent. So every time we save it auto formats, it's like if I typed in some stuff here and I saved it, it formats to be complete, you know, which is really great. Um, in our TS config, we did this over here. We, we added a base URL for source. This means that if we look in our app, ignore all this for now. I can import um, the stuff from styles instead of saying uh, from like dot styles, which is where it is in this source folder. Um, we cleared out a lot of our app. So one of the things that came with it was the testing framework. We removed all that because we're not going to do that. It's just a bit out of scope for the series. But the other thing is we did was we moved our service worker into like core, just so that it's like out of the way because it is part of our core work. Um, and we have register, unregister here. Um, in our index here, we have to unregister. We will register later, but for development purposes, we don't want like our deployed version to be cached because we want to test our deployments and stuff. And this is what bit us really hard when we tried to, when we had the environment variables issue because um, our app was being cached. And then when we wanted to check if the deployment worked, it was like, it's not working, but it actually is. It just needs to be updated. So we had to clear our application cache for that. So I made this unregister for now during development. Um, one of the cool things that we did in here is, well, we built all of this. I'll explain it just now. First, I want to show you, we made services. So in our previous project, um, we just imported Firebase from Firebase and, uh, that's all cool. But if you only want to use the auth and the Firestore or like just Firestore or something, you need to import Firebase slash app, and then you import the specific modules that you want to use, because these are quite big modules and you don't want to actually like add stuff into your project that you're not going to use. So here we initialize our app. The config object is, is this stuff here. This is all our environment variables, API key that comes from here in our env file. Cool. And that happens, that gets set when our program builds. So when we run yarn start, uh, it will put those values in for us or yarn build will put the values in for us there. 
So we, we exported dbn auth. We're not actually using it. We just know that we will use it later because the user needs to log in. So they need to use the auth service and we want to get like data and send data to our Firebase database. So we use Firestore here. Anyway, let's go over to our little piece of code that we wrote. We spent quite a lot of our time um, unpacking this actually. It actually took us quite, uh, probably about an hour and 45 minutes um, to do the setup. Uh, we did run into trouble with the Firebase deploy stuff, but we sorted it out with the environment keys. But, you know, we got all that stuff out of the way so that we can do all the fun stuff. Now, unfortunately, my video settings were a bit terrible there, but they, they should be better now. Um, moving forward from tomorrow, I've set up my streaming to work a lot better. It's just because I've changed devices and, and things weren't very good. But we've sorted that out. So in our index, we just have an app. Uh, we did talk a little bit about TypeScript and stuff we can do with it, but um, that's a bit out of scope for this recap. So you guys can just go watch the video if you want to see the little bits of TypeScript we did. I've also got other videos on TypeScript, so you can check those out. Um, what we've done is we have a type symbol X and O and a type block, which is symbol, so it's X or O or this dash. And this is to represent our game board. Our game board is a grid. So let me go show you the grid. Here's, here's what our app does. Uh, we deployed it to our Firebase service. So you can get it there. I'll leave a link for that in the description. We've also moved our project to GitHub, so you can go see it there. So I'll leave an app in, a link in that description as well. Um, so we've got it on localhost as well. But basically what we can do is you can start like playing like this and it just tells you whose turn it is. Whoever plays, it has their turn. If you click on an existing one, nothing happens. If you click clear board, it clears the board. And every time you clear the board, um, it changes whose turn it is. Like it, the starting person's turn changes. So this is what our app does at the moment. Very basic, um, consists of like a grid, which is like my container. It has three rows in it, and each row has three blocks in it. And then each block has like an on-click assigned to it, so it updates the game board. Uh, the game board is just a nine item array. So we have like item zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how that works from zero to eight is nine, nine items. So back to our code, um, that's our game board here. We set it as a whole bunch of dashes. Dashes just represent that it's empty. So we just use that to be our empty representative. And uh, I mean, if we wanted to, we could do undefined as well. It doesn't really matter, but yeah, it's, it basically consists of an array of blocks. It's like nine blocks in there. Now we have a, a starting turn. Um, a starting turn can either be X or O, depending on the symbol here that we've defined above. And uh, we started as X, and then the if it is X's turn, the default value here is going to be if the starting turn is equal to X, then it is going to be true. You can remember it's a boolean, so it's either true or false. Um, if it, the starting turn is something else, like if we change this to O, uh, then the starting turn would obviously be different. But uh, yeah, we just kind of put that in there so that if you change who is going to be the starter, then yeah, that happens. Uh, this is all going to change. It's not that big of a deal. We have handle click for clicking on the block, handle clear. So when you clear, uh, we just have this um, this functionality here. It, it changes who's gonna be the starter and then it sets currently X, whose turn it is, like if it is X's turn to be, if the starting turn matches X, you know? So the same as what we've done up here, we're just resetting it here to handle clear and reset the board back to be empty. I'll show off this handle click in a second. So we basically have this container over here have a paragraph that says player's turn. If it is, if X's turn is true, then we return X, otherwise O. That we can see over here, um, that X, if we clear it, it's gonna be O's turn, so we show it here. And then we have our three rows and our three blocks. So um, I'll explain this in a bit, but this is basically styled components. So um, we keep it separate, like, you know, we style the row and blocks and containers like somewhere else. And then we see it in JSX and it all kind of makes sense here. It's finally a back button or a clear button. This just uh, handles the clear that what we defined above. Now, clicking on a block, first of all, this is what it renders. So if the value is not equal to empty, then we will say nothing. But if it is, I mean, if it is equal to empty, we'll say, we'll say nothing. But if it's not empty, then we're going to say render the board.value, which is either going to be X or O. So that means um, if we look at our app, yeah, all of these are dashes. Um, and if we click on it, then it's O. And like 
that that's pretty much how that works. I don't know how to explain that any further. <laughs> Here's our handle click function. It takes in the index that we pass through, which is a number. And we've got an index matching each index in here. I mean, we could probably put these blocks into their own little components uh, and then just use some sort of context thing to, to get a hold of them. But uh, I think we'll just rely on Firebase for all of this. Uh, so we'll put a little Firebase hooks in once we do it. We're going to skip creating context and all that where we don't need to do it because um, we want to build this app fairly quickly. Now, one of the things we did do is this handle click. Um, first of all, we only want to change the value if the value is actually the empty dash. So um, if I click on the existing value, uh, it shouldn't change. So that's that's what that if statement is for. Then we create a new board based off of the existing board and we change that new board at the index that was clicked. So new board at one being clicked, we will change it to, if it is currently X's turn, we'll change it to an X. And if it's not X's turn, we'll change it to an O. Then we toggle X's turn. So if it was X's turn, we turn them to false. If that was true, we change it to false. If it was false, we change it to true. That's what this statement does. And then we set the board, the current board to match the new board that we've just created and edited. So that is pretty much how that works. Um, now you're all caught up. We're doing another stream tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. South African time, that's GMT plus two. That is on the 6th of May, it's the Wednesday. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, the stream quality should be a lot better compared to today's stream. I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, if you guys are keeping track with us and watching, please leave a comment and a like. We're sponsored by the like button, so I really, really, really appreciate you smashing that. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know if you guys want anything specific from this. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention, the plan for tomorrow is to like set up this to work with Firebase. So we're going to move this logic to Firebase. Another thing we want to do is on clicking this, every time we make a change to the board, we want to actually check now, okay, is the board um, like, has someone won, has someone like lost or has X1 or has O1 and you'll see it based off of who just put something in and then um, is the is it a draw because it will be a draw if the board is full so that's that's kind of an issue um and then you know we'll, we'll leave it for them to see and then it'll click clear so one is we're doing firebase the other one is we're checking for whether or not stuff's been done i also want to add some routing in because the way firebase is going to work because we're making a multiplayer game you're going to have to join a game room so you'd have to do something like this you'd have to say like um slash room um, slash, you know, ID, which we could say AAA. So we're going to set up our Firebase to do this so that we can do some routing and our Firebase and then the checking win conditions. That should keep us pretty busy for tomorrow's stream. If you guys have any questions, please ask below. And yeah, thanks for watching the videos. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys find it valuable. Anyways, cheers guys.